out. I can't hear you. <laughs> Can you hear me? I can't hear you. I think you first need to exit and set up the microphone again.
Good morning. Hi, good morning. Can you hear me? I can hear you just fine. Okay, thank you. This is Yoshiki speaking. How are you today? Yeah. Is anybody else shown? No. Huh. Uh, Kumorosak from Thailand was here, but uh, his mic is not working, so he's trying <laughs> right now. I, 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 did, I did everything, and then it reminded me I have to use Chrome. So I had yeah. to open up Chrome, but I don't have the passwords weren't working. It wasn't let me in. It recycled me twice. I, I had just finished a meet. I just finished a meeting. So I, I was, I, I finished at 7.05 so I can be here mm -hmm. on time. I started looking mm -hmm. at my notes and by the time I was done, I was like, I can't get in. So at I least see. I'm in now. I see. Are you David? Or I am David, yes. Okay. Hi, okay. hi uh, did you hear me? Yes, ah. we hear you. Yes. Oh, yes. Okay, okay. Uh, hi, David, uh, nice to see you. Nice to see you uh, too. I, uh, Follow many of your books. <laughs> oh, you, you, uh, yeah, well, yeah, you, are, you are quite famous. <laughs> I'm, I'm nobody, just another person. Just another person. <laughs> I, I hope today we have uh, at least four current panelists. But no. I, we, we've only got uh, a few minutes, so four minutes. Four minutes, yeah. So if it, we we do what we have to do, I've run exactly. I've run three of these, and if they don't show, they don't show, and you just go forward. Okay, that's correct. And we have we have the conversation, mm -hmm. so uh, it's just what you do. <laughs> so, Are you in Hong Kong, David? Uh, no, in, no in I I left Hong Kong on. Well, today, today's my anniversary leaving Hong Kong, November tw November 25th in the United States, 25th. Uh, I left Hong Kong to come just for a holiday. My wife was the sickest she's ever been in her life in December 2019, before they heard of COVID. She was mm. 10 days sick as can be, dry cough, spicing fever, everything. Then my son got sick for five days, my oldest son. And so I believe they had COVID and then everything locked down. Everything in Asia was closed in January, so I couldn't go back. And I put everything in storage. I had someone put everything in storage. And about three, five months, five months ago, six months ago, I had a, we went through. I said, yes, yes, no, no, yes, yes, no, no, yes, yes. And I had everything shipped back to the States. So I miss Hong Kong. I miss it a lot. I miss, <laughs> I miss Asia a lot. But I'm working my calls. I, I'm working with Zhenya Asia. So I work with the CEO of Zhenya Asia and, and I work with brands still, but I'm doing it from here, from uh, my my little humble abode. <laughs> Sounds good. And Mr. Sasaki, you're in, in Tokyo or, or in yes, it, Kyushu in Tokyo? Yeah, from my, from my home office, which is uh, 50 kilometer north from Tokyo. Okay, okay. The country Japan side. now is okay, right? The, the situation uh, in yeah. Japan is quite, yeah. quite good. In yes. Tokyo, it's uh, yeah around twenty daily infections. Yes, but but Germany just had seventy four thousand today, right. and right. and I mean the the list, it's not looking pretty. There are a lot of things going on, so we're going to be starting in two minutes. So there will be three of us right, right. now. So. Right, so right, right. I will I will be less I will not present as much as I will talk and share as I, okay. I think that's a that's okay. a better style especially with three people. Okay, I think we we have uh, two minutes more. Yes, two minutes. I received some note from Harry. Harry Appenopoli, and uh, but somehow I, I don't understand the in our the, the list in the the brochure. I mean, uh, on the on the website uh, doesn't include his name, but but the other the other guy did not uh, respond, and Sachin Danat 
did respond, but but nothing much. I uh, didn't they, they really confirm. So well, we do. Anyway, we we, yeah, we, we cover the kind of, topic. Yeah, we do our jobs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think we're live now. Well, maybe we can start now. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Sure. Good, good morning from Thailand. Uh, welcome to Paris Asia meeting. This session is on sustainable regeneration of globalizations. In in this session, the 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 official list of the panelists include Mr. Yoshiki Sasaki, the Chief Executive Officer of Japan Strategic uh, Capital, of course, in Japan. And then we have uh, Mr. Hari Eponapali, founder of CIC Group in USA. Then uh, Mr. David Goldsmith, President of Goldsmith Organization in New York and Hong Kong. And Mr. Sachinda Nath, Executive Chairman, Google Capital India. Welcome to Sachinda. Uh, well, as the session chair, I will briefly introduce the issues concerning sustainable regeneration of globalizations. As the COVID-19 virus swept the world, followed by closing borders, halting international trade and capital flows, there were questions about the pandemic lasting impact on globalizations. The pandemic has caused the largest and fastest decline in international flows including trade, foreign direct investment, and international travel in modern time. Do these setbacks signal a fundamental collapse of globalization? That's a question. But according to the recent study by Harvard Business Review, a closer look at the recent data in the late 2021 paints a much more optimistic picture than most people thought. Why international travel remain significantly down and is not expected to rebound until 2023. Cross border trade, capital and information flow have mostly returned stabilized, and even grown over the previous years. Corporate globalization is not easy, but if international opportunities and competitive trade matter for a company before the pandemic, they will surely continue to matter in 2021 and beyond. And since countries that connect more to global four tend to grow faster, the world needs more rather than less 
globalization to accelerate the recovery of from COVID-19. So this session, we will discuss how the world needs to overcome rapidly the damage caused by a pandemic, yet safeguard natural resources, including human lives, build the mechanism of trade re-globalization based in Asia, automation and AI regenerate too quickly for sustainability to be fully considered. What about the many UN SDG goals? Are they going to be forgotten in the rush to capitalize new opportunities? And can a future disaster be avoided? So this is more or less uh, what I can introduce the, the issue of these sessions. With this introduction, I, I will call upon each of the panelists to share their view, perhaps initially for seven or eight minutes. So let me start with uh, Mr. Yoshiki Sasaki. Let me introduce him a little bit. Uh, Mr. Yoshiki Sasaki is the Chief Executive Officer of Social Impact Solutions Company Limited, which specializes in providing home medical and healthcare services and providing startup ecosystem globally. And through these activities, trying to create socially impactful, sustainable business. He has been in venture capital industry for three decades, including investment in Alibaba in 2002. Mr. Sasaki holds Bachelor of Engineering, Mechanical Engineering, 1973, and ME System Engineering, 1976, at Kyoto Universities. So the floor is your Mr. Sasaki. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Professor Foka of Osak. And the the COVID uh, was actually a uh, pandemic, but for Japan, it was uh, in some way uh, did good because uh, Japan was a tight knit society, so people. Uh, couldn't do business without face-to-face -face meeting. But after the pandemic, people are used to uh, communicate through Zoom or other uh, remote medias. And that uh, probably increased the efficiency of the society. And uh, uh, Japan is right now, uh, the, the COVID patient is becoming very uh, low and starting to open up uh, very slowly <laughs> relative to other countries. And the, this uh, relates to three steps. One is the entry to the country. We are now st starting to open up, but uh, the daily quota is 3,000 and 3,500 people a day. So uh, it's not much. And the, even if they come into the country, uh, the people are, I mean, the monitored uh, very strictly. So uh, the, in terms of uh, transaction with other outside of the country, it is a very slow process. And if, and we are preparing for the next. Uh, pandemic uh, situation uh, and the at the last wave we have provided a home health care to visit the patient who are not uh, accepted to the hospital and who was forced to stay at home and we visited this patient and made a triage so that people uh, can be uh, prioritized to be accepted to, to the hospital. And we believe that decreased the uh, number of deaths from the uh, COVID with the last wave. 
And if we talk about the how to promote globalization, since we cannot travel very easily, uh, for example, we are using uh, our local people in the different country as our hub to do business there. Therefore, without traveling, we are now investing in Africa, in Tunisia, and in Nigeria, uh, using our friends in UK and Germany and in Africa, so that uh, we cover uh, through our team uh, each, in each locality without uh, going, going and back uh, ourselves. Of course, face-to-face -face is very important, but this will, will return very slowly. So the organization needs to have the capability to operate at the distant geographic area without traveling. In doing that, you need a team in each different countries. Uh, this is what I think. So uh, this is my present uh, thinking for how to uh, maintain our activity with this pandemic situation. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, now we, we can uh, move to our second uh, panelist. Uh, I think uh, we, we, let's, let's uh, move to Mr. Sashinda Nath. Uh, I, uh, let me introduce you a little bit. The, in fact, I, I, I don't have your, your brief CV. Maybe you could introduce yourself <laughs> briefly before you uh, provide the audience uh, about your view on this uh, issue. Please go ahead. Uh, the floor is yours. We, we couldn't hear you. Can you unmute? Okay. I think the the system is set up, I believe, that once you log in to the system with a certain setup, that unless you get out and rejoin with a new setup, unless you are on mute, which is very different, but if you come in differently, it doesn't recognize making changes. I believe that's mm. the way it's set. Yeah. Oh, so it has two layers of... Uh, right. You, you, that's also. why it says you need to confirm these settings you confirm yeah. the settings, and then what it does is it locks in that thing. So he would have to go out and come back in at, at, with right. a new setting. Mm -hmm. I'm just taking a guess at it, but I am I think I'm right on it. You are correct. Uh, why don't we do this? Uh, we, we will uh, move to the Mr. David Goldsmith first, <laughs> and then, then the, let, let uh, Sachindra trying to fix the, the issue of the the microphone because you can so, hear so, me. <laughs> yeah, I could hear you very well. So, so the, perhaps the, doesn't need to be introduced so much. Uh, Mr. David Goldsmith, uh, the president of Goldsmith Organization, based in New York and Hong Kong, and uh, he has been entrepreneur in his entire life, owning over twenty business around the globe. He is currently president of, of uh, he lived uh, 10, 10 years in Hong Kong. And uh, he is a patent holder of technological applications and products related to artificial intelligence, cell phone application, battery technologies, and consumer product, as well as founder of Project Moon Hut Foundation, 
and over seven year effort with NASA to improve life on Earth to the accelerated development of Earth and space-based ecosystem. David is the recipient of the Hollywood Producer First Global Visionary Disruptor Award, New York University Excellent in Teaching Award, awarded literary, sorry, literary achievement for Pay to Think, and been named by Meeting Magazine as one of the 26 hottest Perhaps sexy as also speakers. <laughs> so the first you are there with. Uh, uh. Okay, uh, let me start by saying that the if you've read the write up of this particular session, this panel, it's a very complex question that's being asked, and there are very there are multiple levels to them. So what I'd like to do is go through them and break them down as quickly as I can. To preface this, I am a globalist. I believe in, I love the world. I love that we have the capability of bringing people together. And COVID has, has had huge disruptions, yet there were already disruptions on the way that even if COVID had not come about, we might be sitting in a similar position, but based on geographic wars or separations of states, um, countries that don't want to work together in the same way. So. Let's start with the first part. This session was supposed to look at the, the ravages of COVID and to safeguard natural history, as well as uh, the human condition. And if we were to take a look today, when we say ravages the world, what does that mean? There is a very unequal imbalance around the world as to what ha COVID has influenced. Is it socio? Is it economic? Is it psychological? Is it political? Is it health? And in all those conditions, we could argue that in some place in the world, something has gone astray. There have been challenges in each category and many others. But at the same time, if we look at the condition today, and I'm going to use a very generic date. Today, there were on the world, a worldometer. It's not the most scientific, but there were 5, 560,000 cases where 74,000 cases were confirmed in Germany today. What does that mean for the world when we have countries that are underreporting and we probably have well over a million cases a day coming and, and hitting our planet? And what that means to me is I think we're not done. I had said in 20, when this COVID started in March, I said, this will go to 2024. That was my prediction. I stick with it. They just released today or yesterday that the B11592 genome sequence out of Botswana has 32 different mutations. And there are not 32 is enough to be able to avoid everything that we've done because we don't have a cure. We have a vaccine. And the vaccine stops a certain type of protein and a certain type of uh, uh, mechanism. I'm not going to go into all the details right now. That allow COVID to be able to exist. And with a million cases a day on this planet, there's sure to be more variations that come through. So they, the, we're going to be normalizing for quite some time, this closing of borders. And I don't believe that we're going to be moving in the direction as fast as individuals are hoping. I think that in 2021, we would like to see the world open up, but we have to be ready for a longer haul. Now, safeguarding natural resources is such a huge statement that that Frank uh, had written in the write-up. What do we mean by safeguarding natural resources? I don't know if anybody has been reading. I have been reading some of this content, so I don't know who pays attention to this. But Brazil just two years ago had 3,000 square miles, or three years ago, 3,000 square miles of the rainforest was cut down. Two years ago, they met that in June or July. We met again this year, the same numbers of the year pre previous, in the middle of the year, because no one's protecting the rainforest due to the COVID situation. They just put 400 sharks on the endangered species list. We are looking at potentially a 60 degree Celsius condition in the Middle East within the next 15 to 20 years. China had a 50-year dump filled in 25 years, and countries such as America discharge about 12 billion gallons of municipal waste into the ocean every day. So in terms of safeguarding our natural resources, we weren't safeguarding natural resources pre-COVID, 
And we're definitely not safeguarding them today if you look at the condition that we're running into with oil. We are seeing an increased use of oil post-COVID because that is one of our means of energy. And if we look at the fact that our world is full of oil, the toothpaste we use has petroleum in it, the products we use every day have petroleum in it, we hadn't safeguarded our natural resources before. I don't think we've changed through COVID and become a better species. Now that said, let's jump to the next one is, will Asia take the lead in this? I'm going to be nice living in Hong Kong for 10 years. I left in tw actually today, two years ago, and couldn't go back because of COVID. The first month I was in Hong Kong, there was on the paper that if the world was to live the way Hong Kong did, they need we need 13 additional worlds. We consume more than we ever will. And I don't think Asia right now has positioned itself to be the winner. I think we're going to find pockets around the world of individuals and groups that are going to start bringing technology solutions to the table. But I don't believe it will be a, a coordinated Asian effort. And when I read the words, will Asia take this? I don't think it will be Asia. I think we need to bring individuals together. And my guess, this is my prediction, that we won't see any real leadership in the, until about the year 2033 to 2035. I don't think our world has gotten damaged enough. I don't think people are hurt enough that it makes that much of a difference. Bangladesh floods every year, 156 million people, but it needs to flood more. The, the um, Greater Bay, which used to be considered the Pearl River Delta, needs to be hit. I was there when Hong Kong was hit by its first ever super typhoon and a T10 in one year. We don't have enough damage going on to make the inf that be an influence. So very quickly on the last two points was, do we think we're going to be forgetting the UN goals? I the 17 SDGs, I'm going to be kind here. I think they're great that there's an initiative there. But have you ever considered the cost of taking one photograph and posting it on Instagram or Twitter? It is equivalent to three 20-watt light bulbs running for an hour, not including storage to go through all the cables, through Facebook and everywhere else. We are not reducing our, our energy usage in a way that's productive. If you look at damaging the environment, when you look at clothing you wear, I don't see people wear <laughs> clothing like when I was growing up. I'm 58. We used to wear clothing until it wore out. Now we don't. But there's three life cycles to clothing, manufacture, wearing, and discarding. And the most damaging is the wearing, not the manufacturing. The amount of water, the amount of chemicals, and the, and the polymers that come off of the uh, washing is more damaging than the manufacturing or the, the, the deliver, uh, getting rid of. And... Our crypto mining situation is now 7 to 8% of the world's energy for solely the purposes, in many cases, of people who say they want to change the world, but they want to make money first. So the mm -hmm. 17 SDGs are admirable, but I don't think our world is heading in that direction. So the last part of it, and I'll end it with this, is that the can this future be uh, avoided? I work every single day. We have a team of teams of people all over the world working on this. I don't believe it will happen in a intuitive manner. I don't think we'll be able to solve it directly. I think we have to solve it indirectly. We have six mega challenges in the world today, climate change, mass extinction, ecosystem collapse, displacement, unrest, and explosive impact. Those are the six. They supersede anything. Your family doesn't eat, you'll throw away all the 17 SDGs. So the challenge is, how do we overcome them? And I believe at this point in time, we can't play a reductionist role. We have to actually accelerate innovation in certain categories that will be able to address this. So I don't believe COVID will be or has been an impetus for pushing us to globalization again. I think the world is already there and they'll find, it find its way. But I don't think we're going to come out this out of this in a very positive manner for at least the next 25 years. That was my bright story. <laughs> 25 years uh, rather long <laughs> yes 25 years because if uh, there's we've had we've lived through the past 50 years which have been amazing 
but I don't think yeah. the next 25 years are going to be as pretty. I don't think humanity has grown. I think we've st- taken a step, a few steps back. Well, thank you so much, uh, David. Uh, a lot of insight. Let let us move to the 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 one that we. Can you, can you hear can, me now? Uh, yes, yes, very well. The, so <laughs> so, uh, Mr. Sachinda Nath, Executive Chairman of Ugro Capital in India. Uh, maybe you start by introduce yourself briefly, and then perhaps you, you can uh, express your views. Go ahead. Yeah. Thank you, Professor. So <clears throat> now I'm founder of uh, a platform which is Ugro. Uh, we are dedicated to small business financing in India. We are building uh, Ugro as India's largest uh, SME and micro SME uh, small businesses uh, credit platform. Uh, after spending 25 years, uh, you know, as, as a financial services professional, I set up this company in 2018 and we are trying to solve the problem of credit for, you know, millions of small businesses. The credit gap for this is $600 billion uh, in India. So I will start by uh, saying that the impact of pandemic, uh, especially for countries like of India, has been transformative. The uh, reason I can, uh, contrary to what David has been saying, uh, my firm belief is that, uh, you know, developing in poor countries like India, when they are forced to innovate, that happens only through very severe measure, measures uh, and like pandemic. So there are a few things uh, now which I believe um, and I agree that, you know, we have not learned much, uh, much from the pandemic. I don't think so that we are changing. Uh, for 19 months, I stayed at home uh, and ran my company, grown you know, from 100 people to 1,000 plus people during the pandemic. Uh, but every day now I'm getting requests for people asking me to come travel, meet face to face. Not necessarily that is required, but that's, uh, that's human behavior. Uh, so to the, that extent, we don't change. But what is what the pandemic has done uh, and why it is helping, especially for small businesses and, you know, in India is the force of digitization. Uh, the competitive landscape of or the what we call the physical barriers have now broken for the first time. As you know that India, uh, if you look at the healthcare, the way the healthcare delivery in India, countries like India have been, Pre-pandemic and post-pandemic is is really really changing. The level of digitization which has happened in in vaccination in India uh, is unheard of. Uh, we have the second largest country in the world which have been able to vaccinate a large population. Almost uh, 100 percent of its adult population has at least one dose of vaccine, and that has happened because of the you know, advent of technology how we have been able to integrate people, deliver vaccine in the remotest part of the country. Uh, second is the, as I said, the competitive landscape, because, uh, you know, especially if you look at uh, 34% of our economy is, uh, uh, is contributed by small businesses. One of the biggest problem for uh, most of uh, uh, the part of the economy, and especially in small businesses, was that they were unable to compete in this uh, this world wherein large corporates, big market places were. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, yes, good. Okay, sorry. Somehow my camera has switched off. Yeah, but uh, I think so that even that majority of the ecosystem, the supply chain is getting digitized. Uh, it has really helped for you know major part part of the small businesses to contribute to that. And most of the people are now ready to adopt to this. Now, uh, and some of that is with progress, uh, you know, newer economies, small countries, to be ready to embrace the change. Now, obviously, it requires a little bit of political will uh, in terms of helping and supporting uh, different part of the economies and how they, they compete. And when it comes to the sustainable goals, uh, I think so that's very tricky especially for emerging market and, and countries which have to, you know, feed people versus, you know, balance the goal. Uh, and that's where, you know, 
we sometimes we falter but on certain accounts if you look at poverty hunger uh, i think so the government in in our countries like us are now forced to you know bring some of those goals at the forefront of their policy making because they know that they can't survive and remain in the power unless they you know you know they start fun- focusing on these things and that's making making a difference uh, difference to our life uh, whether this this trend i genuinely believe that the trend of uh, of being non physical should be sorry the trend of being non physical should be uh, helpful in um, in making people work more efficiently more uh, timely uh, but i must say that uh, you know i don't think so that uh, things like covid pandemic is uh, would recede or end the way our society is growing the amount of hurt we are creating for for our planet covid pandemic my belief is just one of it uh, one this would not end uh, second i think so in next decade we would see repeat of multiple such pandemic and when i say pandemic it can be in any form and shape uh, <clears throat> you know in india in last 6 uh, months uh, more people have died uh for not just because of covid but for other other reasons actually the um, health delivery uh, uh and the number of people who could not get uh, treated for other things is far higher than the than the covid itself while covid is very very high we have a zika virus which is going on we have something other so i think so this uh, this boundary less uh, world and what risk it carries of when people move from one place to other place would continue to grow uh world has remained divided in two parts I, i keep saying it's rich world versus poor world and this time at least the covid has shown that uh, when things pandemic hits uh, rich cannot protect itself from from impact of this it has always genuinely be believed wherever you have heard in you know t- a decade back whenever you thought of a pandemic you always thought this to be an asian african phenomena uh, you never believed that this can hit the the europe the us because you always believed that the power of the capital can protect you against against these kind of things but this time it has shown that world has to be more unified when it comes to you know global problem and i think so that where you know i agree with the david that world has not learned we continue to operate in you know in in silos uh, we don't think so that the problems are are global problems uh, you know we think that this is we have to protect our boundary first uh, and then rest problem pe- should be taken care by others but i don't think so that humanity can grow in go in that way unless we you know come together and solve some of the main problems of the world together this would continue to be a problem but i'm still optimistic i'm optimistic because uh because actually if you look at right from 1918 when the first pandemic hit uh it you know it it continued for 3 years we are in the second year of our pandemic uh what is sad that you know after 100 years a uh, similar kind of force of pandemic has hit but we have taken exactly the same time uh, to uh, to overcome that you you would have presumed that after 100 years with level of technology healthcare development amount of money we invest in medicine you know pan, covid pandemic should have at least you know we should have been able to overcome in 6 months time but i think so last 100 years back we took 3 years i think so this time will take 5 years so that's the sad part uh but i and also that you know we have to be ready for next 10 years for three or four more such things to happen uh but but human race is the is the uh, is the most superior species on our planet uh, you know we are the weakest physically uh, but we have the survival is instinct which are unmatched so i think so we would survive of this and grow from where we are is my firm belief 
so i think so that's where that's where we are so it's a balance between uh, matching the the aspiration of all of us uh, you know keep it and and growing but at some point of time that we have to start balancing it uh, by protecting a not for our current generation for our next generations which is not happening at this point of time okay so good i think more or less the, the we are partly optimistic and partly not so optimistic so. uh we let, let give a chance for for the audience to to say something if they have uh I, if uh, the audience uh anybody would like to say something please uh, take your microphone anybody else why you why you okay, wait okay mr narayanan one a mic how do we do that uh, i have done that for you okay you you can you can you talk mr Ra- narayanan how can i manage the request uh, let me see I try to okay I have it. Okay, go ahead. I I have for why you the microphone I it will take some time to complete. Oh, waiting for a question. I okay. think it was interesting right. that you had mentioned uh that you believe the the ultimate species or the highest species however you would set it <clears throat> we're not acting intelligently across the entire global span one one of the privileges i think of living in hong kong and living in luxembourg <laughs> is that asia is just as far away from europe as it is the united states and i can share with you my the people i know by and large who are not globalists I have no clue what happens in Asia. It's a foreign country. I mean, the whole place. Sixty-seven percent of the world's population lives there. Uh, they say anywhere between five to thirty percent of Chinese are overweight. We're we're feeding people, but they're obese. So we're not getting nutrition around the world. So I don't think we're as intelligent as we might make ourselves out to be. At least other species are capable of creating balance in their own ecosystem, and we are just not. So I, I I follow you, but I don't follow you. We're just not capable mm-hmm. of of living in an environment. I mean, all, all our clothing is fairly fairly new. Our rooms are nice. These things all took trees and the energy to create this, just to have this conversation. So I'm I'm not as optimistic about humanity. I think we it might be we need to have a few few layers of people pass away to create a new type of environment. Oh. Okay, I think we 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 had we have only eight minutes left, so so maybe we can go another round. Maybe everybody take two to three minutes, and then I will sum up the the sessions. Since uh, Doctor Rajiv wants the mic again, he's asking. So yeah, I did I did give him the mic, but I don't know. Uh, there he is. Don't yeah, he's here. There he is. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, good morning from India, and very, very Hi. interesting discussion happening. Uh, thank you for giving me an opportunity to speak. My question uh, is to to all of you, specifically Mr. Nath, and you said that you see the pandemic is going to take uh, two more years. Yes, we realize and we understand. Uh, I come from the background of um, uh, starting a new startup. Uh, in terms of uh, doorstep delivery of diesel, which is a, which is a very new concept, at least in India. Uh, actually, the lockdowns and the pandemic have helped to think about uh, this business, like all other things, all other uh, products reaching home. Why can't diesel or petroleum products be thought of petrol also? But uh, as of now, it's diesel. If you say that twenty twenty four or maybe two years, three years more to to come back to the normal C. Do you think startups like us? I mean, and we are seeing most of the startups getting becoming unicorn in this period. Do you think petroleum 
as a product or diesel as a product and as a startup has a has a future especially in india and also is there is 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 this business has a future outside of asian countries as well to mr nath and anyone else who want to answer this please thank you yeah i would take it up uh, my belief is that anything which which deals with uh, with fossil fuels which is diesel petroleum uh, is not something which we should focus on uh, i think so the consumption of of petroleum is actually hurting uh, our planet far more than than anything else it obviously hurts our economy uh, <clears throat> while this is an this is an hour of need but i think so while this is a good start but i would suggest that uh, the uh, one of the thing which or the trend which you will see is ev one the one of the biggest problem in the pro- in progression of ev is the how do you charge the vehicles how do you you know provide that and if you if you are creating a supply chain network of delivering diesel uh, i think so this is the right time for you to even think of as you know india doesn't have charging stations and you know there is massive the number of electro electrical you know evs which are being now rolled out are are very high in number but nobody is thinking of building the infrastructure of how those vehicles would you know uh, run on roads so if you can think of uh, a way that along with diesel if you you know provide the charging station portable batteries then obviously you are an ex unicorn because that's a problem which is to be solved not just for india but for the world right that that we have to move away from petroleum we you know we keep this is a, there is a finite resource available uh, and that would come to an end i think so by 2060 uh, and that's why we have to think of alternative ways to that i have a completely different perspective on, in in one area in one direction with that question or that comment first of all i don't care if i i don't think anybody who's listening or on this line or here should be thinking about whether you're a unicorn or not it doesn't matter and it won't matter in the next 25 years with climate change mass extinction resource depletion social despair we're going to have challenges that make being a unicorn to save the world later is not the answer when it comes to petroleum products we're not going to be able to get away from them anytime soon as i've said toothpaste has petroleum products in it our clothing has petroleum products in it or the, the amount of things that are, i have a list in front of me it's massive we're not going to get away from that and that will help to be one of the biggest challenges of the next 25 years so yes in india and for startups this is a great time because there's new opportunities for new distribution channels at the same time it's a curse because some of the things that we don't need are going to be accelerated and that's where we have not dropped the use of petroleum products over the past 4 years because everybody went from home they didn't turn off their heat or their aircon during the summer or winter and therefore we used almost the same amount of bad product and pollution in the air add that on top of the russian fires add that on top of the uh, overfishing so maybe you maybe today you get a unicorn but tomorrow your children will pay for it thank you thank you so much uh, sir for answering this just to just to uh, you know add to mr nath's comment yes of course we are thinking about getting uh, cng and ev on the go on the move yes but see the diesel diesel delivery here in india is is not for vehicles only actually not allowed for vehicles at all but for the last mile delivery of the equipment and machinery that cannot come to the petrol pump for example the the generator sets uh, the 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 construction equipment etc etc and the, and that is going to stay for a long long time we understand fossil fuel is 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 going out and we should not be using it like david you said for or or you got you you've got you've got you've got to think of the full infrastructure i don't know if you know this but to charge a battery in a car you have to run a plant a facility it could be an electric run or solar but the in, the entire infrastructure for our planet is that a coal burning or a fossil fuel running running plant is running in the background at 100% so if you lose your electric it kicks in if you lose your solar it kicks in so we're actually running two systems simultaneously it's not an advantage it makes us feel good that's all it does it makes us feel good we we're, we're still in the stone ages we there uh, project moon hut is our organization we're a nonprofit working around the world doing this in quietly 
is we want to change how we live on, improve how we live on Earth for all nations. And we're addressing some of these challenges. And you can't, you can't look at them the same way we have been for the past 100 years. It just won't work. Well, uh, we, we, are short of, we are short of time. Uh, maybe I ask Mr. Sasaki to, to comment a little bit, uh, perhaps short uh, lesson. Yes, on, yes. On yeah. <laughs> uh, probably the answer is we need to uh, act uh, considering the planet uh, of the sustainability. If you look at uh, several curves that we are doing, it is not sustainable. So we need to think uh, on a global basis how to make it sustainable so that the, the natural resources can mitigate. Uh, within that bound, we, we, limit, we need to limit our activities. So how to do it is a question. So every, everybody needs to uh, think of our innovation to keep that. Well, thank you so much. Uh, let, let me try to wrap up the, very briefly. We have, uh, and we, in fact, we, un, we don't have time. I, I think that from from what we discussed, uh, at least uh, the the pandemic will has given us or has removed the the uh, physical barrier. So we 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 still can move on with our business, you know, working online. But but there seem to be a kind of. Uh, not so optimistic about uh, whether COVID will end soon. Perhaps, uh, as uh, David uh, predict uh, before, at least it to 2024, which is another two three years. And during this period, I think it's, it's tough. And as far as the the uh, sustainability, the the SDG, I, I think the, of course the, there are some difference, but but. For me, I, I thought uh, the the emerge of emergence of the new technologies will be able to solve this problem in the in the next uh, ten years, according to the book by Tony Sobseva, uh, the 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 thinking humanity. I think we are going to have clean energies, with solar, wind, and and uh, great batteries, and also the the transport as a service, you know, self driving car. EV and so on. So, so, but, but anyway, the, thank David. Uh, he has uh, presented us six mega challenges: climate change, mass extinction, ecosystem collapse, displacement, unrest, and explosive impact. I think this this is something that we have to deal with, especially in Asia. I think we consume a lot of resources. So, with with this. Uh, uh, we are we are two minutes uh, over our our uh, allowing our allow time. So thank you so much uh, for for the the three panelists, and uh, thanks the audience for for attending these sessions. Thank you and see you next time. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you.